Hello everyone! My name is Kira Leighton and I am the Makerspace Educator at the Discovery Children's Museum in Las Vegas, Nevada. And today for our at-home discovery, we are going to be working with CAD software. Have you guys ever heard of CAD software before? CAD is short for Computer Aided Design. So anytime a computer is helping you design something, it's technically a form of CAD software. CAD software can be used to do all sorts of jobs. Architects use it to design buildings. Um, engineers use it to build parts for machines to get them to work. And if you guys like watching animated movies or playing video games, CAD software can be used to help create characters and animate them as well. So we're going to jump right into it. I hope you guys have fun today. Have your computer with internet access handy and have a ruler with a centimeter side on it. Okay, well, let's get right into it. So the CAD program we're going to be using is Tinkercad.com. It's a free online program, so you're going to open up your web browser and type that in. However, this program does require an account before you can start using it. So if you've never used Tinkercad before, uh, use this time as an opportunity to talk to one of your adults about helping you make an account. I'm going to log into my account at this time. Um, so you can always pause it and come back to it later once you've made an account. Uh, it does require some adult help on that front. So I'm going to type in my super secret password. And there we go. So once you log into your account, the main page you're going to get to is basically your designs. Uh, if it's your first time using it, this entire page will be empty, but because I use this a lot while working at the Discovery Children's Museum, you can see some of my old projects on here. Uh, we are, however, going to create a new design, so go ahead and click on that. Once it opens up, you will see what our workspace looks like. We've got this big blue work plane in the middle. We've got a shape library on the side, so it kind of works like a building block type of thing. First thing I'd like you to do is take a look at this up here. This is your file name. Now, right now it's Sizzling Trug Jagoob, which is a ridiculous randomly generated name that Tinkercad made for me. Um, if you like that name, you can totally keep it. I, however, am going to change it to bookmark since that is what we're going to be working on, just so I can find it easier later. Now, Tinkercad is a 3D software. Uh, there are CAD programs that are 2D. So do you guys know what the difference is between 2D and 3D? Well, 2D, a lot of people say, is flat, which is correct. And 3D means it pops out more. So the reason why that D is there for 2D and 3D is it stands for dimensional or dimension. A dimension is a way in which you measure something. So if we look at our blue work plane right here, I want you to imagine that as a piece of paper on top of your desk. It is two dimensional, it's flat. So we can only measure it uh, backwards and forwards and side to side. It's too thin to measure its thickness. However, if I add a cube onto here, you will see that this is now three-dimensional. It is thick. It actually kind of takes up space and being measured up and down as well as side to side and front to back. Um, I'm going to swivel my screen now by holding down the right button on my mouse. And you can actually hold it down and swivel the screen around so you can see what it looks like in three dimensions. So there's my cube on top of my thin piece of paper. Now any new object I put on here is all going to stay on top of this work plane. So anything I put down on top of this piece of paper is going to stay there. So this can get a little bit confusing because it looks like things are getting smaller or that they're on top of each other, but they're not. This is really a, third, uh, a 3D program, so everything is moving around in three dimensions. So if I click and drag this cube to try and put it on top, you'll see that it won't go on top. It just goes behind. Sometimes it'll merge through it. But that is how the 3D is. It's all just staying on that piece of paper. Now, the good news is for this project we're working on, we're going to keep our bookmark pretty flat so it can fit between the pages of a book. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about how to stack objects in another video later on. So stay tuned. Now, the bookmark I'm going to make, um, I want to be fairly thin to fit through the pages of my book. So I'm going to click on this and we'll take a look at these different handles that can be used to resize my cube. 
Um, I could grab this white handle right here and drag it, but as you can see, that's a little tough for me to control. If you wanna use it, you totally can. I prefer using these black boxes instead. They will only change it in one direction. And then to make something taller or thinner, you'll use this white box with a little dotted line going to the middle of the rectangle underneath it, and that can make things taller or shorter. Now you'll see this number is changing on the side. What that is, is the measurement of the box I'm working with, so this number 22 here. So we are currently working in millimeters. So at this point, I'd like you to take a look at that ruler you pulled out, and we're gonna take a look at the centimeters side. So I said we're talking about millimeters, so why are we using a centimeter ruler? Well, that's because if you look in between those centimeters, there's a bunch of little tiny black lines, and each one of those is a millimeter. There are 10 millimeters inside of one centimeter. Um, so that's how we're going to convert from what's going on on the computer screen here to understanding how big the object we're making in real life actually is. Now, if you don't know your tens times tables, there's a little trick I'm going to teach you. So since there are 10 millimeters inside of one centimeter, all you have to do when you're trying to figure out how many millimeters there are is to add a zero to the end of the centimeters. So one centimeter, 10 millimeters. Now what if I'm doing two centimeters? That is now 20 millimeters with that zero at the end. So that's what we're going to do. Now I think I want my bookmark to be about three centimeters wide. So I'm going to grab this little black handle here. Now I have to multiply that by 10. So three times 10 is 30. I'm going to drag this down till it says 30 and that'll be how wide I want my bookmark. Now I think this is too tall to be a bookmark. What do you think? So I think to make this as small as it goes, I'm gonna take that down to one millimeter and I don't need to do any conversion for that. I'm just gonna make it as skinny as I possibly can without it disappearing. One. Uh, okay, and if you, can't, if you can't drag it like I couldn't right there, go ahead and click in this box and just type in the number. One, there you go. So sometimes if you are working on a trackpad like me, it doesn't wanna work. <laughs> All right, so this is looking slightly more bookmarkish. It's very thin. Now I still think it's a little bit short. So instead of adjusting this side like I did before, now I'm gonna adjust this side. Um, I think, what do you guys think is a good length for a bookmark? I'm gonna take it to about, let's say nine centimeters. So what is nine centimeters in millimeters? We'll stick that zero at the end and that's going to be 90 millimeters. So. Let's see how big this guy goes. 90. There we go, 90 centimeters. I mean 90 millimeters, whoops. All right, so I technically could use this as a bookmark. I could be done if I wanted to be, but you know what, I want it to give it a little bit of style. I like those bookmarks that look like they're made of ribbons. Um, so I'm gonna add a little, a little detail to the end of my bookmark to make it look a little fancier. I'm gonna add a pointy bottom to it. All right, so I've added this roof here. Now it's not quite in the right orientation for me to try and put it at the bottom of my bookmark. It just would kind of stick up kind of funny. So I need to turn this guy around so that way it'll fit at the bottom and make a little triangle right there. And that's where these little rounded arrows come in. These are my turning arrows and I can turn it in three different ways. I could move it around in a circle like this. I could flip it around like this. What I'm gonna use is this guy here so I can flip it so it's standing up. That's what I want. I'm gonna take it to 90 degrees because that'll mean it's now standing completely straight up. Now I'm gonna press the D, the letter D on my keyboard and it's going to drop it up to the work plane so now it's flat against it just like the rest of my bookmark. So let's drag this guy over. Now obviously still a little big, I gotta do some resizing. Uh, first I wanna make it as wide as this guy is, which is 30 millimeters. So let's type in 30 millimeters where it says 20, 30. Boom, it's just the same width now, even if it's a little off center. And now I'm gonna make it one millimeter thick just like I did with the rest of the bookmark. One, 
boom, there we go. So it's now the same size, but as you can see, it's way off center. I can click and drag that to try and get it lined up, but my shortcut for getting it just lined up perfectly is going to be clicking and dragging a little red rectangle around it and then pressing this button up here that says align. This will open up a bunch of little handles that'll show where do I want to line it up and it gives you a preview if you roll over it without clicking it. The one I want is this one right here. We're going to line it up perfectly centered down that way and now there it is. I've still got a little bit of a gap inside so I'm going to click this green triangle and now this is where the arrows on your keyboard can really help you out. Again, I could click and drag it, but I'm going to use the arrows to just nudge it one little centimeter or millimeter, sorry, at a time to try and line it up. So I've got that perfectly lined up. I could even make it a little taller if I want to. Yeah, I'm going to give me a more pointy, pointy end to my bookmark. Now that that is all together and I think it looks good, I'm now going to group them. The way you group them, just like I did for selecting the for the alignment tools, I'm going to click and hold and drag this red dotted rectangle over everything, let it go. Now I'm going to press this button up here that looks like a square and a circle squishing together. That's my group button. Go ahead and click on that. And now instead of seeing two shapes, you now see one shape that all moves together. So there you go. There's my fancy ribbon looking bookmark. Now, again, I could be done. I want to give it a little bit of flair on top. I'm going to add a star to the top. Now, if since you're designing this yourself, this is yours. If you want to add a different shape to it, like this hexagon shape over here, or maybe the heart shape, you totally can. I'm going to do a star, though. And this star is pretty huge. I don't think I really want that sticking out of the top of my bookmark, so i got to make this guy a little bit thinner. I could take that down to one millimeter, just like I did for everything else, but let's see what happens when I group this. Now look, it's all pretty flat. You can barely tell I have a star there. So to give it some pizzazz, I'm actually going to pump it out and make it just a little bit chubbier than the rest of this. Um, so I'm going to press the undo button. Again, if you ever make a mistake, this guy is your best friend. It will step backwards so that way it won't... Um, that way it'll undo the last step you did if it was a big uh-oh. So this guy, too thin at one millimeter. I'm going to take this guy to, uh, let's do two millimeters. Just a little bit taller. And I'm also going to scooch it over a bit. I don't think it quite worked out. Maybe make my star a bit bigger. To size something proportionally, because as you can see by clicking and dragging this, it doesn't quite all size consistently. I'm going to press the undo button so you guys can see what happens if I hold down the shift key on the keyboard while I click and drag a handle. So if I click and hold shift, now drag this with my mouse, it'll all size up together. That's what we call proportional sizing. So it all stays the same in relation to the other sides. Looks a little better that way. Um, it's a little taller than two millimeters, so I'm going to knock that back down to two. Boom. And I like how that looks. Uh, again, if you didn't like your star being all cattywampus like this, you could click and drag that around, but I'm going to leave it just like this for now. I'm going to click and drag, so that way I can make another group. And boom, there is my bookmark so far. Now, if you want to end at this point, totally fine. I'm going to add just a little, a couple more steps to give it some personality. Uh, I'm because I've started this star motif, I'm going to grab another star. Now I'm going to straighten this guy out just a hair. And try to line up the top of my star with that one thick stripe up at the top. So now that I've done that, I'm going to do that proportional sizing again. Uh, holding shift, clicking and dragging. And I'm going to make this guy a bit smaller. And I'm going to make this guy a little detail at the end of my bookmark. So if I can drag this, nope. Whoa, that's where undo is your friend. I'm going to try and click and drag this guy. Oh, he really wants to resize. Oh, he really wants to resize. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> See, I've been working with this a while, and you still have some trouble trying to work with it. So undo is your friend. So let's scooch this guy down to the end. I'm going to try and line that up in a good spot on the bottom. Now I could keep it popped out the way it is, but I'm going to teach you use this to teach you guys how to create a hole in something. So if you take a look right here, this is your solid button. You could use this to change colors of what you're working on, 
but you can also make it solid versus empty. So I'm going to make it empty by clicking this whole button. So now I've got this whole shape star in my bookmark. Now they're still separate shapes, so we're going to do that grouping again. Click and drag, select them all, and now click on the squish together button. Boom, and now you can actually see that the whole space saver is now a literal hole inside of your bookmark. So there you have a pretty simple yet stylish bookmark. Um, feel free to take some time and uh, customize this to make it your own. You can add some extra shapes to it and try to get a feel for those tools. Again, if you've never worked with CAD software before, I understand that these controls can be very difficult if you're not used to them. So please take your time uh, trying to make it your own and give it your own personal sense of style. If at any point you do need to exit and take a break, that's what this button up here is for. You can always click on that. It'll automatically save it and take you back to your main page. Now, if you'd like to share this with someone, like if you'd like to share it with the Discovery Children's Museum, there's two buttons you're going to pay attention to over here. First of all, there's the export button. If you want to send this to us to have us try and 3D print it so we can show it off to other people, you're going to send us an STL. Um, I believe you can send that to us through social media, but the other way that might work better if you just want to show what it is that you're working on, there's also the send to button. Uh, here you could send us a picture of your design, or we can also have you invite us to work on your project. So if you click on that, it'll generate a link, so that way you can share it with other people. So you'd press copy link, and then add that link to whatever form of communication you are sending to this to us in. Uh, but anyways, please take your time, make this awesome, and use this opportunity while you're at home to practice the controls and get better. Because remember, practice makes perfect. And if you really want to start building some complicated stuff, you got to start off with the simple stuff first. Well, this is Kira Leighton from the Discovery Children's Museum um, at my home maker space for the time being, signing off with Discoveries at Home. So have a good day, everyone.